So chapter 19, testing hypotheses about proportions. In this chapter, we want to be able to take our data and make determinations about what that data is trying to tell us. So like always, I start with some vocabulary. Hypotheses are models that we adopt temporarily until we can test them once we have data. The starting hypothesis is to be tested is called the null hypothesis. Null because it assumes nothing has changed and it's denoted by H little o here, which is pronounced not, H not, or they also say H null. The alternative hypothesis contains the values of the parameter that we consider plausible if we reject the null hypothesis and it's denoted by H a. So we have our null hypothesis that's assuming that nothing's changed and the alternative is a change or effect on that null. The key calculation is to determine exactly how likely the data we observed would be if the null hypothesis were a true model of the world. Specifically, we want to find the probability of seeing data like these given that the null hypothesis is true. This is called the p-value. An alternative hypothesis, known as a two-sided alternative, we are equally interested in deviations on either side of the null hypothesis. For two-sided alternative, the p-value is the probability of deviation in either direction from the null hypothesis value. So when here we have our null hypothesis, if we fail to reject it, then outside is our rejection range. We want both this end and this end. This is our two-sided alternative. An alternative hypothesis that focuses on deviations from the null hypothesis value in only one direction is called a one-sided alternative. So it could either be in this direction or it could be in this direction. One or the other is rejecting our null hypothesis. Hypothesis testing. There are a few hypothesis tests that you should include in your reports. Some will be about more than one sample. Some will involve statistics other than proportions and some will use models other than the normal model. So you will not be using the C-scores. The test about proportions is called the one proportion Z-test. So that's this chapter here. We want to test hypotenuse based on proportions. So we, we will be using the one proportion Z-test. Your conclusion about the null hypotenuse should never be the end of a test and procedure. Suppose one decides to reject the null hypotenuse of 20% of a company's metal products have cracks. In favor of the alternative, that is the percentage has been reduced. They must still evaluate how much the cracking rate has been reduced and how much it costs to accomplish the reduction. The size of the effect is always a concern when we test hypotenuse. A good way to look at the effect size is to examine the confidence interval. So our effect size is look at the size of effect of our alternative. So now let's look at some examples of setting up a null hypotenuse and alternative hypotenuse. A large city's Department of Motor Vehicles claimed that 80% of candidates passed in driving tests, but a newspaper reported a survey of 90 randomly selected local teens who have taken the test found that only 68 who have passed. Does this finding suggest that the passing rate for teenagers is lower than the DMV reported? Write an appropriate hypothesis. So, my H no is what something that hasn't changed. Motor vehicles claim that it's 80%, so my P is going to equal 80%. I want to know if teenagers is lower than the DMV reported. So by lower, I'm going to use the less than sign here for my alternative. So HA is P is less than 0.8. I want to know, is it less than 80%? Is it lower? So there would be my HO and HA. Next example, write the null and alternative hypotenuse you would use to test each of the following situations. A governor is concerned about his negatives, the percentage of state residents who express disapproval of his job performance. His political committee pays for a series of TV ads, hoping that they can keep the negatives below 30%. They will use a follow-up polling to assess the ads effectiveness. So what is my null hypotenuse? Well, that is, I'm at 30%. So P equals 0 0.3. And what is my alternative? I want to find values that are below, or I want it to be below 30% approval rating. So it's uh, less than 0 0.3. So P should be less than 0 0.3 for my alternative. <clears throat> Next example. 
Write the note and alternative hypothesis you would use to test each of the following situations. Only about 20% of people who tried to quit smoking succeed. Sellers of a motivational tape claim that listening to the recording messages can help people quit. So what is my H null? Something that doesn't change. On average, about 20% of people quit smoking. So P equals 0.2. Now my alternative, read this carefully, I want to see if it helps them out. So it would be, I want more people quitting than 20%. So I would write a greater than 0.2 here. Oops, I did less than. I would write a greater than, I want my P value to be greater than 0.2. Last example. In the 1950s, only about 40% of high school graduates went to college. Has the percentage changed? So my null is P equals, there's my value, 0.4. And has it changed? Means it, is it anything other than 0.4? A change will be it's not equal to 0.4. So my alternative will be P is not equal to 0.4. That would represent a change from our null of 0.4. So this is when you would use a not equal. When you're talking about changing what this not equal to, this actually is an example of a two-sided alternative. So I have my null hypotenuse here, and if I reject it, I want my alternative to be anything other than that. So this would be a two-sided here, when you have this not equal. When you have something like this is greater than, I have my normal curve, I have my p-value, and I'm looking for just one side. So this would be a one-sided alternative. 